today I will be revisiting my propane generator. I'm going to be getting it ready for winter, just in case we get any power cuts, which is it's not very likely. We haven't had a massive power cut in a very long time. I can't remember the last time. So what I'm going to do is, I'm still waiting for this to arrive, but I've got more of that metal exhaust tube. It's 25 millimeter. I've got another meter of that. Um, the issue is the exhaust is still just a little bit too noisy so I'm wanting to quieten it down so I've got this and it is grossly oversized uh, it was actually a bit bigger than I was expecting but it's a back box from cars like the Citroen C1, Toyota Aigo and Peugeot 107 I'm going to put this on it so this will probably sit somewhere in there and we'll have the exhaust coming in and then coming out and outside the shed a bit higher up this time and that should hopefully be a heck of a lot quieter uh, there is still quite a lot of uh, exhaust noise outside um, but the noise of the generators itself isn't that much of an issue because it's inside the shed another thing is uh, with this all being in the shed, uh, it's actually going to keep the shed nice and warm actually if the generator is running for any amount of time in the winter because this thing is absolutely huge and it will radiate most of the exhaust heat just into the shed uh, and that will keep it nice and warm and you've got the heat off the engine as well I'm still not exactly sure about uh, how I'm going to join them together because this tube here is 40 millimeters and that's only 25 so it's going to have to be crimped with exhaust clamps which I do have and I've also got exhaust jointing paste I don't know how good that will be it should hopefully be okay if I crimp everything hard enough I also need to figure out some sort of system where I can control the throttle of the generator so this solar charge controller when the batteries are at their fully charged voltage which is about currently set to about 30 volts because it's really cold it outputs a signal uh, a variable duty cycle PWM signal as it gets full and when the battery is at the fully charged voltage there's a 100% duty cycle signal coming out of there and it was originally used to drive dump loads but I don't have that connected I've got nothing connected up to that just now and I was thinking if I could somehow connect that up to a servo I would maybe need some electronics or something I don't know um, the generator would run at full power while the batteries are below the fully charged voltage and as it approaches the fully charged voltage it will throttle down to save fuel but uh, this can output a heck of a lot more than 30 volts running at full speed so I will need a separate high voltage cutoff which if the voltage like say hit 31 or 32 volts it would immediately just be connected into this system here and it just cut the power to the engine immediately the generator has started using an electric bike controller and this potentiometer just acts as the throttle so what I'm going to do is add on a push button switch so that uh, I could just press a button to start it I'll just have this set at some sort of suitable starting speed and it'll only run when I press the button so I'm going to get the button just now Ok so I tried putting the button in between the, the signal line from the potentiometer into the controller but it just wouldn't work for some reason uh, I think it's because the controller maybe expects some sort of ramp up on the signal uh, and I think that's a safety feature that they have built in so it's like if you connect up a throttle and it's like stuck it wide open your electric bike project uh, doesn't take off and kill someone so I have to turn this potentiometer to start it uh, just making sure that everything's on just now something funny happens to the propane in the hose it 
kind of sort of goes off if it's sitting in the hose too long so it takes a little while to come through As you can see it's a little bit noisy out here, which is unacceptable. Yeah, it sure takes a long time to burn off all the propane in that hose, but um, it's usually quiet inside here. And I reckon if I put that large exhaust on it, it's going to be even quieter. Because I think some of the noise from outside is still coming back into the shed. Basically all my muffler is, is just that tube going into an old empty petrol tank that'll go off another engine. And it's just like stuffed with various fiberglass stuff and... It's not really ideal. Uh, so I'm going to get all that taken out just now. So here's the exhaust pipe. It's um, It was on the engine. It's only half a metre here. And as you can see there will be a bit of uh, packing out that will be needed and sealing up. Uh, that shouldn't be too difficult I hope. Uh, I might have to make some cuts so it's like um, so it has a cutout so it can crimp down onto the pipe and that'll all be sealed with exhaust sealant as well as this wrap stuff and I might mix that in with the sealant to create a really good seal uh, so that should um, hopefully work okay this is going to have to come out completely though because I don't know where I'm going to mount this okay so here's what I'm thinking just now the half metre length is not long enough to reach up in there and I've got it set up like this just now and what I need to do is just make a hole in the back of the shed for that other pipe to come out and this is going to be suspended away from the wood by that uh, part coming off there and I'll also use other metal brackets to keep it away from the wood um, and as with the exhaust part going out the back of the shed, I could just wrap around that some of that exhaust wrap that I've got. But uh, with this thing being so huge, I reckon the exhaust temperature coming out the other end of it is going to be reasonably low anyway, because I'll have radiated away a fair bit of the heat. Uh, so it shouldn't really be a fire hazard at all. So... The battery has been taken away for recycling and this is the one that will go in in place of the old one so it gives me a bit more space. I will get this corner cleaned out but before I do that I'm going to cut the small slots in here so I can crimp it down onto the smaller size hose, uh, the smaller size exhaust pipe and uh, get that all sorted out. But I think this thing actually leaks very slightly. But it shouldn't be too much of a problem uh, because there is ventilation in here, so I don't think a carbon monoxide build-up is going to be um, is going to happen. So this is the sort of thing I'm going for. Uh, there will be an exhaust clamp on here, and I just cut out a slot in each side, about four, maybe four millimeter, four millimeter slot out, and so it crimps in like that. And that will all be sealed up with the exhaust um, sealing paste I've got, and I might mix in some 
of that. Uh, I might use exhaust wrap or, or something else just to fill it out a bit and that should seal okay. Uh, and that should be fine but I've not got the longer length of tube yet so I will be back when that arrives. <laughs> 